the recurrent expenditures come much higher than the expenditure you know, in the budget? Can you explain that? Exactly. You see, I I have seen that um, we have our current expenditure higher than the capital expenditure in the budget. It is a Nigerian factor. You see, we should not shy away from it. It is a structural problem in the country because we have allowed government to grow to the level that it is being run with a substantial part of the budget which ordinarily should be used in driving capital projects for the people. There is no hard and fast rule to it. If you take a typical state like Kwara State, that is largely a civil service driven environment, what we have is a plethora of workers that we inherited that are forming what we call the current civil service. Go to the federal level, go to the local government level. You see what government is experiencing. Unless there are deliberate efforts by government to begin to create a structural change which will not allow for further growth of the civil service and allow the money that should be run, uh, that allow the money that should, that should be used for capital projects to come out of that. You see, I saw a lot of criticisms coming out in the papers. I just laugh. If you don't give it a holistic approach, you will not understand how these things are done. A typical state like Kwara State that is civil service driven, where the major source of internally generated revenue is largely supported by the pay as you earn. Other areas we need to get allocations from, sorry, we need to get revenue from, are hugely untapped because we, we need to inject more money there to be able to bring them to taxable levels. A typical one is the issue of land. I kept saying a thousand and one times that land is one source of income for any government anywhere in the world. And unless you add value to that land, you cannot make money from it. And our attempt to do this has been wrongly construed by those who see government as trying to take over land from the traditional owners. We are not taking land from traditional owners. We are trying to improve on land so that the land use becomes meaningful and government can now begin to earn money from the use of that land, largely from values that have been added. Land on its own does not make any meaning. But the moment government deploys services to land, then government should earn revenue from it. That was what gave birth to the new GRA, which people didn't understand very well. That is part of government's responsibility. And we've also tried to see how we can create additional taxable environment, which will not only generate employment for our people, but will also drive the economic environment. A typical one is a shop right. We brought shop right here. Shop right has become a major employer of labor and a major driver of the local economy. The success of shop right will now see us bringing additional people in the likes of shop right who will come and create jobs for our people. For instance, if you look at the amusement park, which has been touted as the old ED that is being sold. It is unfortunate. I don't know why it's being referred to as the old ED, because it is, it is insulting to the intelligence of Islam to refer that place to as ED. Why? Because after it was used as an ED, it was used as an amusement park where alcohol was sold. So the recurrent expenditure that you see that is high is largely because we need to continue to sustain government the way it is. Because if you want to, what is, what is the component of the recurrent expenditure? It is largely overhead and personnel. All the other areas are just small, small areas of driving government business. If we say we want to shrink it, the implication is that we want to reduce the workforce. Because other taxable environments are still very, very small compared to what we can generate to augment the allocation that's coming from the federal government. So by and large, government will continue in this way, but will ensure that we do not increase our recurrent expenditure, especially in overhead and personnel, so that a lot more monies will be saved in future to drive capital expenditure. 
one way by which you see that capital expenditure is bigger than recurrent revenue, uh, recurrent expenditure is when you engage in borrowings. And you see, borrowing itself is not done out of the blues. You must look at your capacity to borrow, utilize, and pay back. And we are approaching our borrowing through a strategic funding model. In other words, we don't want to embolden government, which is constantly borrowing money. Because the only way you can develop is to constantly borrow money when your money is recurrently inflowing, that will allow you to be paying back gradually, and you have access to large sums of money you can carry on capital projects with. For instance, you look at the last, uh, the last, last year. We are doing five general hospitals at the cost of over two billion. Ordinarily, where would we have gotten that money from, from the normal allocation of 2.7 billion that comes into the state? We need to go and borrow money. We now begin to repay back that one poor, that over two billion gradually to the banks that lent us this money. And in the process, we are carrying on renovation of five general hospitals. And don't forget that this also extending to areas of water, also extending to areas of education, also extending to areas of agriculture, and of course security. So these are all areas that we must carry on, and the only way we can do that is to continue to rely on the money market and the capital market. But we don't, we don't want to overstretch ourselves in such a way that it will begin to impact on our capacity to drive our recurrent expenditure. So recurrent expenditure, as it were, will continue like this for a while until when we begin to introduce what we call electronic drive into running government. You see, government as it is today, with the number of civil service, we can't begin to retrench people. But we must carry them on until we begin to stop growing government by not replacing people that are retiring, but rather moving towards electronic drive. And this will take a process of between uh, 5 to 20 years. That is when government will be properly restructured and government will be start getting smaller and more money will be available for capital projects. Otherwise, in the interim, we need to continue to carry on like this. Any state where you see that the capital expenditure is bigger than the recurrent expenditure, it is largely supported from borrowings. And we don't want to overstretch our borrowing so that we don't put too much burden on our funding models, which will enable us to carry on government business and at the same time carry on some projects which are captured under the policy trust. So you see, what the, what the opposition is seeing is just one side of the picture. They are not looking at the other side. You can't look in absolute terms and say, look, your recurrent expenditure is higher than your capital. What is the component of your recurrent expenditure that is making it high? It is largely overhead and personnel. Go to the local governments today. They find it difficult to pay even the overhead and personnel because of the shrinkage in the allocation and the low capacity to drive internally generated revenue. So that one will continue for a while until one will begin to manage the size of government. When we begin to manage the size of government, as people are retiring, we're introducing electronic drive. And that will enable us to manage the size of government and free more money to drive capital expenditure, which will be supported also from the capital and money markets.